Welcome to the video. This video is about shifting, scaling and reflecting the graph of function. More specifically, what is shifting of a graph, scaling of a graph and reflecting of a graph. So let's begin. Shifting of a graph. It basically means that the whole graph of the function can be shifted vertically, both up and down and horizontally, both left and right. So let's do first the vertical shifting. For vertical shifting of a graph, adding a constant k to the function, that is y is equal to f of x plus k. If k is greater than 0, graph shifts up by k units, and if k is less than 0, graph shifts down by k units. Let's consider a quadratic function f of x is equal to x square. So adding a constant k is equal to 3 shifts the graph vertically by 3 units, and adding a constant k is equal to minus 3 shifts the graph vertically down by 3 units. Similarly, for horizontal shifting, adding a constant k to the independent variable, that is x, y is equal to f of x plus k, if k is greater than 0, in this case graph shifts by k units to the left, and if k is negative, graph shifts to the right by k units. Consider again the same function, f of x is equal to x squared, so adding a constant k is equal to 3 to the x, shifts the graph to the left by 3 units, and adding k is equal to minus 3 to the x shifts the graph to the right by 3 units. Now coming to the second question which is about scaling of a graph. It basically means that the whole graph of the function can be stretched or compressed vertically or horizontally. So let's first do the vertical scaling. For vertical scaling multiplying the function f of x by k stretches the graph by k times that is y is equal to f of x times k. Similarly, multiplying the function by 1 over k compresses the graph vertically by k times. That is y is equal to f of x times 1 over k. Let me show you through an example how vertical scaling can be done. This time consider another function, the sine function, y is equal to sine x. Multiplying sine x by k is equal to 5 stretches the graph vertically by 5 times. And similarly, multiplying the sine x by 1 over 5 compresses the graph vertically by 5 times. For horizontal scaling, uh, multiplying the independent variable of the function by k compresses the graph horizontally by k times. That is y is equal to f of kx. Similarly, multiplying the independent variable by 1 over k times stretches the graph horizontally by k times. That is y is equal to f of 1 over k into x. Let's take an example. Consider the same sine function. Multiplying the x by k is equal to 5 compresses the graph horizontally by 5 times. Similarly, multiplying the x by 1 over 5 stretches the graph by 5 times. Now coming to the last part uh, which is about how graph of the function can be reflected about x and y axis. The graph can be reflected about x axis simply by multiplying the function by minus 1. And uh, similarly, the graph can be reflected about y axis by multiplying the independent variable of the function by minus 1. Let me demonstrate it to you how this can be done through an example. Consider another function f of x is equal to x cube. Multiplying the function by minus reflects the graph about x axis as shown. And similarly multiplying the x which is independent variable by minus 1 reflects the graph about y axis. Note down here that all the techniques can be applied on a single function as well. Let's take a mixed example. Sin x is the function, so multiplying x by 3 compresses the graph horizontally by 3 times, and adding 3 to the x shifts the graph to the left by 3 units. Similarly, adding 3 to the function shifts the graph vertically by 3 units, and multiplying the function by minus 1 reflects the graph about x axis. So that's how scaling, shifting, and reflecting can be applied on the same function as well. So thank you guys for watching this video and if the video helped you, give it a thumbs up, comment on it and subscribe for more.